3D printing is more accessible than ever, with costs coming down and new printer manufacturers popping up every day. There are printers that a hobbyist could easily afford 10 of, or there are powerhouse printers built to handle the needs of an established manufacturing firm. Identifying which 3D printer is right for you can easily give you a case of analysis paralysis. With so many options available, it's easy to feel overwhelmed. There are printers that can handle advanced materials like PEAK, TPU, or polycarbonate, yet others that won't be able to print with more common materials like PLA, PETG, or ASA. There are also types of printers to consider, like FDM, FFF, SLA, MSLA, or DLP. We're here to help break down the different kinds of 3D printers and their capabilities, so let's get started with the basics. In terms of desktop 3D printing, there are two options. There's the plastic melting kind, and there's the liquid resin kind. The plastic melting kind, called FDM or FFF, feeds a thermoplastic up to a hot nozzle where it melts it down and lays it out. When a 3D printer uses liquid resin, called SLA, DLP, or MSLA, depending on specific construction, it utilizes specific formulations of resin that are reactive to select wavelengths of light which means a small light source within the 3D printer is solidifying the resin it passes over. These two methods are similar in that they are printing in three dimensions, but there are significant differences in the uses, strengths, and weaknesses. For simplicity's sake, I will refer to the plastic kind of printers as FFF and the resin kind as SLA. So let's break down what FFF is. FFF 3D printers are the most common form of desktop 3D printing, as the material sciences behind plastics is already well established, which means an easy transition into the additive manufacturing space. Generally, FFF 3D printers are better geared towards users looking for specific material choices and specifications based on materials already used in manufacturing, like nylon, PETG, or ABS. This does tend to mean FFF 3D prints tend to be stronger than SLA 3D prints, especially when FFF materials can be infused with things like carbon fiber or Kevlar. Between FFF and SLA, you're going to be able to find a lot more shapes and sizes with FFF printers, with some as wide as 6 inches or 18 inches, or as tall as 24 inches or as short as 6 inches. With FFF 3D printers, there's also a lot more variance in pricing, with a fairly even distribution from inexpensive but basic to expensive but very well tuned. Think of it like a sedan versus a sports car. The sedan will get you from point A to point B no problem, but the sports car will make it the smoothest ride of your life. Now I think that kind of sums up the basics of FFF 3D printing, which means it's probably a good time to talk about SLA printers. SLA 3D printers, the liquid resin kind, are unparalleled in their precision. Where FFF 3D prints will have very obvious layer lines, SLA 3D prints have layers that virtually disappear. Not only are SLA prints cleaner than FFF 3D prints of the same layer thickness, a standard FFF nozzle is 0.4 millimeters wide, which means any detail smaller than that just gets lost. With an SLA printer using a laser, the laser point can be 0.07 millimeters wide, which is about the thickness of a human hair. This means that all the tiny details of a model gets captured. This does, however, come at the cost of print time. SLA printers tend to be smaller, have more expensive material costs, as the science of making a liquid harden only under specific conditions and not just solid when cold, runny when hot, like plastics, is a lot more difficult. And more limitations on the usable materials, like standard resin, resin with a little ductility, flexible resin, or even investment casting resin, but this can all be a worthwhile trade-off to achieve this level of detail. Some of the most common SLA prints that I've seen are miniature figurines or prototypes approaching a final product, but these are only some of the excellent uses you can use SLA 3D printers for. Now I could go a lot deeper into this, but I think this is a great introduction into what exactly an SLA printer is and how it works. Making a decision on a new and constantly developing technology can be challenging, but it doesn't need to be. Hopefully with this primer, you will have a better direction for finding the right printer for you. And remember, you always have the expert team at MatterHackers that you can email or call to help set you on the path for success. I'm Alec from MatterHackers. Thanks for watching. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video on the basics of what is 3D printing. And I hope this video has piqued your curiosity and made it a little easier to decide on if you want an FFF 3D printer or an SLA 3D printer. You can also check out matterhackers.com for some in-depth articles or the rest of our YouTube channel for more digital fabrication content. Thanks for watching.